Um, I think if you um, if you view an academy as the product as the production of players, either for transfers or for your first team, then it's a natural conclusion that you should drop players who can't realise one of those two values yeah. for you. Uh, where I think football um, generally has lost its moral compass um, is that 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 is a wrong a wrong thought. If you're bringing somebody into your environment to educate and develop them, educate and develop them, and uh, like the U.S. college system, which most U.S. guys give it like a massive bashing because NCAA is so corrupt and like these guys should be pros or whatever. Like you don't know how good you got it in the States, you know, and, and that's what I think the football education process should be at every academy is like, Hey, you, you live in this community. We're a club in this community. You're a good footballer. We want to support your football education uh, as you grow up. And that could end up with you being a coach for us. It could end up with you winning a scholarship in America. It could end up with you playing for one of our rivals. It could end up with you playing in our first team. But we want to give you this football education to make you a better person, make a contribution to the community that we're in. Um, and and in that thinking, I believe that the guy who ends up in your first team ends up much more holistic and appreciative and not feeling like he's you know, just one of many assets and his mates all got kicked out because he's got a slightly better left foot, he's still in, like then you're damaging the culture that you're trying to create anyway. Um, so I think the academy system uh, globally should be uh, a commitment to, to kids who educate. And, and then like here at FCN, sometimes a kid will come and say, like, I can see that I'm not good enough and I want to pursue something else. And I really appreciate it. Um, and that's fine. But to do it the other way around and say, yeah, now you haven't um, met these expectations. Um, and I, I saw this crazy interview with someone the other day. Um, I don't even, it may have even been on your thing, um, where, the, where he talks about uh, the, best, the best kid in his under 11s had had a terrible session. And... Uh, he was always the best kid and then this kid had had like a really terrible session and then he kind of let it go and then a week later he found out that in the dressing room before the kids had told this kid that Father Christmas wasn't real and he didn't know and so he was like completely confused about the fact that Father Christmas wasn't mm. real and no that wasn't and on my show but okay. that, sounds, that sounds great I, th I, I think it was interview. Fulham right I think it was at Fulham a coach from Fulham okay yeah right so the point is in Ghana the kind of stuff that our kids go through, like it could take two or three years. It could you it could never get fixed. Yeah. Like some of the psychological issues. Um, so if you're committed to this kid and your only objective is to like uh, monetize the kid according to his performance, like FIFA needs to change the whole system because that's unethical. And uh, if we're making commitments to kids, they should be on a different, like, framework uh, because you never know what's going on. And and I always say that, like, Right to Dream's proudest ever graduate will probably be never be a professional footballer or be, like, a pretty average footballer. But because of our philosophy, we'll do something else that can do what George Weir or Drogba are doing. And actually, like, their, their uh, sort of football achievements... That was just giving them the platform to do something else.